Welcome. You're tuned into Tangled Threads. If you're digging our content, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you. Hey Reddit, long time lurker, first time poster here. I've read my fair share of stories on this sub, but never thought I'd have my own to share. Yet, here I am, tapping away on my keyboard because, honestly, I need to get this off my chest more than I need advice. But, feel free to weigh in. Jenna and I, we weren't always the cliché of a marriage gone sour. Thinking back, our beginnings were as humble as they come, rooted in the kind of love that makes you believe in forever. We met in college, both of us buried in textbooks at the campus library. It was her laugh that caught my attention first, light and carefree, a stark contrast to the silence around us. I found out later she was laughing at a joke her friend had texted her, something so silly neither of us can remember it now. But it sparked our first conversation, and from there, things just seemed to fall into place. We were young, sure, but we were determined. Determined to finish our degrees, land decent jobs, and build a life together. Our wedding was a modest affair, nothing too extravagant, but filled with so much love and laughter that it felt like the richest day on earth. We bought our first home together, a small but cozy place that we poured our hearts into, making our own. Jenna took to decorating it with the kind of passion she applies to everything she loves, turning each room into a chapter of our story. Over the years, we faced our share of challenges, like any couple does. Financial strain, career setbacks, the kind of stuff that tests you, makes you question if the path you're on is the right one. But we always found our way back to each other, a team against whatever the world threw at us, or so I thought. It's funny, looking back, how I used to think our biggest problem was deciding whose turn it was to do the dishes, or what movie to watch on a Friday night. We celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. Jenna joked about being stuck with me for a decade, but her eyes sparkled with the kind of affection that words fall short of capturing. I remember feeling so damn lucky, wondering how I'd managed to find someone who could still look at me like that after all these years. Little did I know, those sparkling eyes would soon wander, seeking something I apparently could no longer provide. It all started with a forgotten pair of lifting gloves and a water bottle. Yeah, mundane, I know. I was halfway to the gym when I realized I'd left my stuff at home. Annoying, but no big deal, right? I decided to head back. Little did I know that U-turn would lead me down the most bizarre and painful path of my life. As I pulled into our driveway, something felt off. Jenna's car was there, which wasn't strange since she works from home. But there was this other car, sleek and way too flashy for our quiet neighborhood. I remember thinking, whose hot wheels did I just pull up next to? I let myself in, expecting maybe a friend or a surprise visit from her brother. The house was quiet, too quiet. Then I heard them, laughter. Not the kind you hear when you're watching a sitcom, but the kind that's private, intimate. It was coming from upstairs, our bedroom. I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I tiptoed up those stairs. The door was ajar, and there they were. Jenna and some guy, tangled in what used to be our sanctuary. I stood there, frozen. The guy? None other than Zane Carter, local Instagram influencer known for his fitness posts and apparently home-wrecking hobbies. I honestly didn't know much about the guy until she told me later. The confrontation was a blur. Jenna was all tears and apologies, but it was Zane's reaction that threw me. He tried to smooth talk his way out, offering cash to forget this ever happened. Five grand, handed to me like I was a referee calling a foul, he could just pay off. I'd like to say I walked away with my dignity and his money. But the truth is, as I turned to leave, something snapped in me. I turned back and smacked him across the head. Not my proudest moment, and certainly not the most mature, but it felt like reclaiming a piece of my pride that he tried to buy off. I left my house, Jenna's pleas fading behind me. That money? It's in a savings account. Maybe it'll fund a trip or a fresh start. I haven't decided yet. What I do know is that moment, as low and as shocking as it was, it woke me up. To who Jenna really was, to what I was worth, and to the reality that sometimes the person you trust the most can betray you in the most unimaginable ways. I'm not here to demonize Jenna or even Zane. People make their choices and they live with them. As for me, I'm just trying to move forward one step at a time. I've been focusing on myself 
hitting the gym, with my gloves this time, and spending time with friends who've had my back through this mess. So, Reddit, that's my story. Not the kind of gym motivation you'd expect, but it's what I've got. Thanks for letting me vent. Here's to finding strength in the toughest of times, both in and out of the gym. Update. Hey Reddit, it's me again, the guy who swapped his gym session for a reality check a few weeks back. First off, I want to thank everyone who reached out with advice, support, and even those tough love messages. They all helped, more than you might realize. I've had some time to process everything, and I figured I owe you guys an update, especially after pouring my heart out here. So, about the confrontation with Jenna and Zane, it was a moment that changed everything for me. There was a lot of yelling, a flood of apologies from Jenna, and too many excuses from Zane. He tried to play it cool, like he was doing me a favor by offering money to sweep it all under the rug. Jenna was a mess, switching between begging me to stay and trying to justify her actions. It was a circus I never bought a ticket for. In that moment, seeing them together, something clicked in me. This wasn't the life I signed up for, nor the partner I thought I'd chosen. That realization, it hurt more than the betrayal. As for moving on, it's been a journey, not gonna lie. I took some time off work, went on a small trip to clear my head. I've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of reflecting on what I want out of life and what kind of person I want to be. That money Zane gave me, I used part of it to fund my little escape. The rest is going towards a new start. I'm not saying it's been easy. There are good days and there are days when the weight of everything feels like too much. But every morning, I get up, I tie my gym shoes, and I remind myself that I'm more than this chapter of my life. Jenna and I, we've talked, not about getting back together, but closure. It was necessary for both of us. We're in the process of finalizing our divorce. As for Zane, haven't seen or heard from him since that day, and I intend to keep it that way. I'm focusing on rebuilding, on finding peace with how things unfolded. I've reconnected with old friends, picked up some new hobbies, and I'm slowly but surely finding my footing again. It's not about forgetting what happened, but learning from it, growing stronger because of it. So, to anyone out there going through something similar, know this. It's okay to feel lost, to be angry, to grieve. But also know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Your worth isn't defined by someone else's choices. You've got this, one step at a time. Thanks again, Reddit. Here's to moving forward, whatever that looks like. Fuck that bitch, bro. And good on you for hitting that fucker anyway. He deserved it. Goddamn man. Anyways, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threads.